Maybe, maybe I'll talk about it. Just I've put just forty. I've put forty hours into Oblivion in the last two weeks. <laughs> Why does he do this to himself? No one knows. Fresh Pez are good. Fresh Pez are good, and that brings us to uh, the best game not released in 2021. Uh, sponsored by Pez. Sponsored by Pez. Um, generally speaking, when we are playing games throughout the year, we will either catch up on something, or we're going to play something that didn't come out this year. And we think Sometimes there's those... a dry period before yeah, sometimes... uh, games come out. And like most of this year. Or it's like if you know you need to catch up on something you missed last year that you really wish you had played because it totally would have charged last year. <laughs> Uh, it happens sometimes. Uh, so that's yeah. what this category is for. It's kind of, it's, it's a fun category. We usually don't get a lot of repeats in this one. Um, but my number three is a game that I had never heard of until uh, like kind of late last year, which it, it, I think this was like a 2018 game to begin with. But I had heard about it and I had heard it was getting a limited run physical version. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to fucking wait for that. I'm going to check it out. And then it time kept just going and going and going and limited run would not announce the date for this fucking thing. So I'm like, fuck, I, I really want to fucking play this game. And it was on sale one day. So I decided to pick it up at like half price. Literally two days later, um, limited run did announce their physical version of it. And now in fact, it's even a game pass game, but it is bug fables, the everlasting sap uh, sapling uh, AKA, I was the one who told Dash about it. it. It was AKA, hey, do you like that fucking Paper Mario? Um, because it is unapologetically Paper Mario. It is... I mean, it's bugs. It's not Paper it's, Mario. It's, it is, and guess what? It paper is buggy as, It's as good as the original two Paper Mario games. It's extremely so is it better, excellent. Is it better or worse than the sequel, Bug Snacks? It is it's it, it is the prequel to Bug Snacks and it is significantly <laughs> better, um, but it is also the prequel to Fable, and I gotta say it's a lot better than those as well. We got it's weird how they got taller. Yeah, the the timeline splits at that game, and then they go into the snacks uh, category and then the, the the Fable category. But yeah, Bug Fables is just a indie love letter to Paper Mario, um, and it is as like they they do a couple things that kind of make it their own, but. For the most part, it is it's yeah, not much. It is it is Paper <laughs> Mario three, and it's really good. And if you like those Paper Mario games, I would highly recommend checking out. It's on Game Pass, Switch, all sorts of stuff. Um, really, really good. Charming story, great fucking gameplay. It's it's everything I wanted it to be. <laughs> and I played it this year, and I really, really liked it. But Ryan, what was your number three old game? Number three. This was uh this was a big year. But it took eight-ish hours of complete just brute force to convince me that I might actually like the Beatles. So <laughs> I went back, you got Buddy back. Dash, uh, and we played through Beatles Rock Band. Rock Band being just one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, Harmonics really knocked it out of the park. That was uh, really fun, really good. Um, yeah, they do just some really cool things like the Beatles history, like the venues you're playing and the order you play the songs in. Good song selection. Just good shit. I played a lot of Beatles rock band this year, which I avoided for the longest time because I didn't really get or like the Beatles that much till recently. And then now that we sat down and played through it, mostly talking about the Beatles the whole time. We did it all in one sitting and it was it ruled. The Beatles are one of the only, if not the only, like, band I actually know things about. So for once in my goddamn life, we're doing a music thing, and I am the one who is able to tell Ryan all of the trivia the entire time. <laughs> Usually it's me talking his ear off about Rush. Yeah, but no, this time it was, it, it was like, I know a lot of stuff about the Beatles, and we just took it from the beginning all the way to the end in one sitting. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of songs that were only DLC that you can't get anymore, and we can't play online together like most of Abbey Road. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I had a really, really good time doing that. That was a very fun afternoon. That was my number three. 
Hunter, what is your number three since you played nine games this year? My number three is uh, Red Faction Gorilla Remastered. Fuck yeah, dog. Because <laughs> I've people, play- people play those games? Yeah, uh, Gr- Hunter did. <laughs> Gorilla's yeah, I played, great. I played, I played the played... demo of it a lot like 12 years ago. What if you could play the whole game? <laughs> nah, I can't I've... Sound. play the demo like six times. I actually I've played have Red only Faction ever played. One. The first, the first person shooter red factions. Yeah, I they were on sale in like the fall sale or whatever, like all the red faction games. But I only got one and Gorilla because I don't care about the other ones. But uh, like I played one and then I remembered I had Gorilla and I was like, oh shit, yeah, I'm gonna play that one. <laughs> I, I also recall playing that Xbox 360 demo and just like breaking apart the buildings. Yeah, that, I mean that's that's, that's the whole game, isn't that? That <laughs> yeah, game, pretty that much game that's is, the whole game. Yeah. There, there's there's not a lot of games in this category, but that is a Devon Core game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because that was the thing that that game was most praised for, and then they like completely took it out in was it Armageddon? Dude, it's hard to do destruction like that. Yeah, but it's Armageddon... really tough. <laughs> Well, I think Gorilla had this too, but in Armageddon they added a thing that rebuilds shit. So as That's long the as there's as long as there's at least one piece of it left, you can shoot it at the building and the whole building will eventually come back. And then you can destroy it again. <laughs> I think they should make a new bad company. But Jason, what is your number three old game? So my number three old game is Super Hot VR. Yeah, dog. Nice. Like, uh, like, yeah. Uh, other than, like outside of this, all of my old game, like non twenty one, not twenty twenty one games, were things I had like never remotely touched before. Super Hot VR was my introduction to VR. Like, I don't know, a couple years ago when I played like two minutes of it on the PS4 VR. But like, I remember, I remember playing it like years ago whatever that was, maybe 2018, 19, I'm not sure. And like almost falling down at one point in like one of the (laughs) early levels where you're standing like on a ledge and I like looked down and I like actually lost my balance. And that was one thing that really sold me on VR. And once it finally became kind of easier to deal with, uh, with the quest, it was like one of the first two games I downloaded, but I was pretty surprised how good it continued to get through the entire game. Like, it's not the longest thing. It took me like four and a half hours, I think, to beat it. But like how immersive that game is for a very simple black, white, and red and basically nothing else game. Like just grabbing a gun, the level immediately starts. You shoot a guy, his gun flies up in the air. You look up physically, grab the gun out of the air cross your arms to shoot two other guys even though you don't need to do it that way but you have to yeah because it's cool but just like all of the like i physically fell over playing that game and killed like three dudes from my butt (laughs) because like i was dodging bullets and like hiding behind barrels and i like slipped and fell on my butt and was like half laying down like shooting up at two different dudes and like like that game i mean it made me like sweat and physically like nearly exhausted playing it if i would stay in playing it for like an hour to two hours straight but i I was pretty shocked by how good it was because i was pretty strongly on the bandwagon of there's no way vr is actually cool for the longest time yeah vr is such a a weird thing where like at least for me it didn't click until i actually got in there Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. and did the stuff because it's just like there, no there's no way my i'm yeah, like too smart for vr to fool exactly. my brain and then you're yeah. like Ugh. as it turns <laughs> out no you're not yeah. <laughs> like, um you start doing a barrel roll once in ace combat and you just start going, <laughs> <laughs> i stand firmly by that super hot vr is the best vr game that has been made um it may not it may not be like the one that i spend the most time with but like it is it's the game like it has all led to this and if this is the best we get out of it then that's perfectly okay because it gave us super hot vr and like it's very replayable and a very i think a very good game to like toss somebody in yeah it's because it's simple to like it's simple to understand and just pick up and it's like shit once you beat the game you get the endless modes where you can just see how long you can go for Mm -hmm. and And, like there weren't there weren't any 
parts that were like so frustrating and hard that I like would never want to play them again. And yeah. like, almost every game has that. Like almost every game that I like enjoy, I'll think mm, maybe I'll replay that, and I'll be like, mm, there was this one part that I fucking hated, I never want to see again. And Super Hot didn't really have that. It had like one level that definitely pissed me off because you did just kind of have to like waggle your hand back and forth to make time move yes, until like one of the guys would come towards you because you didn't have it was like one of the only levels where you didn't have like any weapons spawn near you but even that part wasn't that bad and i would be fine to do it again when i got the quest it's like okay i have to start all over on super hot oh wait i get to start all over on super hot <laughs> i get to play all of super hot vr again um it that game's incredible and it more moreover, it also ruins every other super hot game for me. Like there are now four super hot games, and three of them suck to play. Yeah, I remember can't cross. It, I can't cross. Yes, I remember. Cross. I remember playing it for the first time. Like the VR one was the first super hot I played. I have played a bit of. I think it was. I think it's just regular super hot on Xbox. It was on like game pass or maybe it was a game with gold or something i think a year two or, or three ago. is on game pass so yeah i i think control mind i think or whatever yeah mind control is. delete is i'm pretty sure on game pass but new normal super hot was a game of gold because we all got it i think i think that's the one that i've played and like it's fun but i haven't turned it on in two years it mm-hmm. ain't super hot vr though yeah nothing is beat saber eat your heart out but i guess that brings us to my number two um so this is one I played like January 3rd of this year. Um, it ju- I did not quite, or no, because no, I would have had to do it after Game of the Year because it didn't get brought up there. But um, when people were doing their Game of the Year list, it was one that I like was seeing very high up on the list of people I really trust, uh, like game journalists and things like that, but definitely not getting any mainstream uh, kind of recognition. But also it's by a studio I have not historically enjoyed games for, but it was on sale kind of in the, in the new year for the, for sales and stuff. And, you know, I had heard enough journalists talk about it um, that I gave a, a honest try to 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim by Vanillaware. And this fucking game is one of the best things I played this year and would totally chart up into my top five if it were allowed to. I Damn. really am bummed that I did not play it in the year it was relevant because I would really, really, really gush about this game. But it does a lot of like anime bullshit. And I get that. Like your mileage may vary on how much you kind of tolerate of anime bullshit. But specifically, what it does is it's not like a choose your own adventure narrative, but there are 13 protagonists and they all have their own stories that are kind of this, they're the, almost their Rashomon on these events that are kind of going through. Mm-hmm. But then there's also this huge time travel hook to it. But basically, and the thing that, that I think this game does really, really well, that like, it's not quite like a choose your own adventure or a normal visual novel, but all you're going to get the same overall story, no matter what order you play the characters in. And they do gate like certain events behind certain things from other characters but giving you the different perspectives at variable times when you would be hitting the story, depending on the order you decide to play the characters is super duper fucking cool. And I genuinely can't think of another game that has quite done that. Um, Cause it's, you know, it's one thing to where it's like, Oh, you know, we're, we're going to do this character. Then we're going to do this character then this one. But, and they, they, when they have control over you, they can be very ginger about the details they leave. But if you can play these in relatively like any order, you start to piece the story together in your own unique way. I also love nonlinear narratives to begin with. Oh yeah. Um, And 13 Sentinels. done well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it is. And I think 13 Sentinels is the one of, if not the best executions of that I have ever seen. And it also gives you the player agency in the way you are experiencing this. So I feel like it's something you could only do in a video game. What's, the, like, what's the gameplay like? Um, is it like a VN? So it's basically a VN or like a point and click adventure is maybe an easier way to describe it. But it's more VN for 75% of the game. Mm-hmm. Then the other 25% 
It's RTS. Are mech battles. It's, yeah, it's, it's like an RT. It's it's really kind of more like a tower defense than it is an RTS. Okay. But they are really easy. You can kind of bank them all towards like certain points in the plot. So you can kind of just like knock them out really quick. I don't think they are the appealing point of the game, but there are ways to kind of deal with them. That It, it really doesn't just d- detract from the main stuff that much. Um, but I went through and I 100% of the game. I got every single trophy in it because I enjoyed it so much. Damn. I I was completely smitten with it. Um, it's also, it's a vanilla no, game. is so a like, different series. Fuck off. <laughs> It's it's a vanillaware game, so the 2D like art in it is super duper well done, but also devastatingly horny. Oh um, yeah, has to be the the characters... usually about things you're not horny about. Oh yeah, no, it's so it's sometimes it's teenagers, Look, other times it's the school nurse. Um, I don't got, know like, how you... out to hear. Yeah. I don't know how you can't be horny for that fucking roast lamb or whatever in Odin Sphere, Ryan. I just I just don't get it. That shit looks delicious. <laughs> but like it's it's one of those games that I think it's unfortunate that it has so much anime layered on it because it's hiding a really cool like time travel nonlinear narrative like story. Mm-hmm. Hunter, did you finish 13 Sentinels? No, I barely played it. Okay. So it's funny I, because I waited for it for like six years. Yeah, you're the vanilla wear guy. <laughs> and I will also say that by the end of the story they maybe layer on a little too much anime. Like, basically, they, like, ratchet up the anime about six times, and they maybe should have stopped around the fourth. (laughs) Um, But up until that point, it's, like, a really just, like, compelling good character story. Um, Hmm. uh, It's, like, the time travel stuff and the nonlinear stuff just lets them do some really, really cool storytelling things. And... It, again it's a really hard sell because of the anime shit but like if you can stomach that it's super fucking good um it's one of the best like vn type games i've ever played and i will recommend it until i fucking am put in the ground and unfortunately i played it just outside of qualifying time for a game of the year last year but yeah you'll get I, them next time it got it got its time in the sun now. so ryan what is your number two uh so this year i I think I, I did focus a lot on more older games, but specifically in the genre of like boomer shooter, <laughs> I played a fuckload. I played, you know, I did Quake. I played through Duke Nukem. I uh, did the Dooms. And after those, I was like, I, I was looking for as much stuff as I could find. I'll probably pick up Dusk at some point. Like I, I I'm firmly in love with that genre. Um, but my number two was Doom 2. Uh, I'd never played through it. Doom. Uh, yeah, and fuck, I love I love Doom 2. That was super fun. Uh, some would say the second best not released this year game. Um, you got over the gap? Yeah, that, that took a while. It, I'm really bad in Doom because you can run and they don't tell you you can run, uh, but there's no jump. So when you look at something like, oh, I should jump, you're actually just supposed to run at it, and I... I forget that every time. Uh, I remembered it this time, and it shows up a lot later in the game. Uh, but Super they're fun. Metroid I think, and Doom Two, baby. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think they still hold up quite well. Uh, yeah, good shit. It's no Quake, but yeah, yeah, it's better than Quake. You're right. <laughs> Hunter, what is your boomer shooter of the? What is your number two boomer shooter? Okay, well, first off, I have a visual accompaniment for this oh this is a, okay this is coming in hot ladies and gentlemen yeah i don't know how to where um, to do this here though. send it to me and i can bring just post send it dm you me maybe i'll just change your picture like your profile picture to whatever nah, that's, that'd be really stupid. stupid so it's mountain blade but specifically it oh, was no. uh dash where the fuck okay specifically it was a my name is genetist freak it was a two who mod for mountain blade oh Oh, no (laughs) because somebody linked it and i was like yeah okay i want more mountain blade why not and like it's pretty obvious from it dash i'm saying it now that some of the character models a lot Um, of love was put into this This is is not one of them (laughs) this is a lot um yeah uh, so they're definitely like some of the character models are good Others are really bad. <laughs> Others are like that, where somebody just shat out one that kind of looks like that character and like, okay, that's good enough. No one cares about them anyway. 
if, if they want a better <laughs> model, they'll make it and send it to me or some bullshit. <laughs> so, How does a Tuhu mod work <laughs> uh, in Mountain not very, Blade? Not very well, it turns out, on some things, because uh, it's the Mountain Blade gameplay, but some... But a bunch of Black NPC- Midian shit? No, some NPCs, they have, like ranged weapons which is the magic where they shoot at once and 30 projectiles come out at once yeah right. that's too who but yeah mountain blade in general uh i just most i put just most time in that stupid two who mod though the game of the year <laughs> all years for hunter it is it will always be mountain blade it's just too good jason uh <laughs> when given the option of mount or blade what do you choose as your number two I uh, choose Little Nightmares. The first one? It's not Mount uh, yeah. Blade. Because yeah. the second one came out this year. I guess that's true. Did it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So did Control but... Ultimate Edition. <laughs> but no, Little Nightmares, it was just fun as shit. I mean, it was just like another kind of mildly spooky, goofy, side-scrolling, puzzly game. Yeah, puzzle platformer. But it's, just, it's just a good look good feel good puzzles like the whole like it, it was definitely a game where i struggled to put it down like i'd be like oh man i got through that level let's see what this other one looks like <laughs> and then i played it for another hour and you can knock it out in a weekend so it's nice you can knock it out that nice game's quick. like two and a half hours long yeah it's very short did you do but the uh the dlc enjoyable. at all did you get a uh, chance i don't to think i that? did it's pretty good. Just, I, mean, it's I like, think I've only played the regular, like, and then it has that weird level with all the man. What's the that makes you feel like you're in Spirited Away, where you're running from the oh running the, from the nasty piggies. Oh yeah, the people who are trying to eat you. Yeah, I don't know why yeah. it's weird to me that Jason has seen Spirited Away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody's seen Spirited. Yeah, away. but I saw that coming from Jason doesn't sit well with me. <laughs> Why? Jason, known near a tomato lover. <laughs> Jason, resident weeaboo. Yeah, man. I went as the fucking little wiener dude that rides a bike with wings for Halloween. You've cosplayed an anime? <laughs> <laughs> when it's on when it's on Halloween, it's I don't okay. think it counts. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't count as cosplay then. Yeah, it's just being it's quirky just, to get drunk. It's just, me, <laughs> it's just me wearing a sweater and rolling up my pants. Okay. <laughs> well, then I suppose that brings us to the number one uh, round of things. And I do not wish to get sappy with mine, gonna... but I'm going to get sappy with mine. Um, something Tree. about trees. 2021 <laughs> and 2020 have been some pretty shit ass years, one might say. Um, I purchased a house March 13th of 2020, which I remember it was the day the bank that we got our loan from was closing. Uh, For the previous two years before I bought my house, I was living on the middle floor of an apartment. And the two years before that, or really, yeah, it's two years before that. Yeah, I was, uh, I was living in my dad's basement. And a few years before that, I was living on the top floor of an apartment. And at, when you're living on the top floor of an apartment, I like to be a good neighbor. I don't like vacuuming at every hour of the day. I don't like slamming things around. I like being a nice, quiet, upper neighbor. Man, I wish you were my neighbor. <laughs> well, and, hey, we did that for a while. We did that bit for mm-hmm. a couple years. It's a good bit. Um, but I was really, really excited to get a house because I've. this has also been a known quantity. I have known since his, since meeting him that ryan was someday going to move away when amara finished her schooling um so when i purchased a house i was so incredibly excited especially it being super close to ryan's work all things considered um that we were going to get to play rock band all we wanted uh finally 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 we could do all of the rock band we wanted to do we didn't need to worry about being noisy for anyone we could just fucking play rock band I have a nice high paying job now so I can buy all the fucking DLC I want. And so March of 2020, when I was gearing up to be super excited to play rock band um, the whole year until Ryan left, Uh, needless to say, 
uh, there were some other things that went down that did not make that possible. Never However, <laughs> there was a brief window this year where stuff was okay, where we did the Rock Band 4 farewell tour, where Ryan and I got together on several consecutive weekends and several consecutive days at some points. Yeah, it was and supposed to be a, a one-off farewell show and we turned it into a tour. We turned it into hey, a tour. Ooh. I guess and the parents once. Yeah, Jason had made an appearance at one point. And not only did this like result in like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hour rock band sessions, but Ryan and I are playing the best we have ever played. <laughs> um, we have achieved a higher level of play. We are hitting gold stars expert most songs. Like we are at our absolute peak. And it would just be a matter of Ryan's going to come over. We're going to buy 10 songs and we are just going to play until our arms can't play anymore. And on the last day of it, we, we were building what would be the final set list. And we get to the point where it's like, well, what if we just played every rush song? <laughs> and we were like, Oh no, we're there. Look, let's just queue up every rush song. We're not, let's just play until you know, we can't fucking play anymore because it, it, we're going to be hurting. It's, it's like an 11 hour session or something like that. And we get through the whole thing. And then at the end of it, our arm, like we are, we, we are in excruciating pain, but we do one more set of our favorite Rush songs. And I am extremely upset with the pandemic, but there are few things I will be more upset with than taking away what was supposed to be the golden age of rock band but nonetheless the the final sessions we did are something to cherish it was so fucking fun and now i'm mad that i live in an apartment and can't play rock band even like online doing the drums that's why i was so happy about uh beatles rock band because i felt like we could capture uh, capture part of that and just yeah. jam I'll be John. You can be Paul. Just being and shit it, asses and to each other. The Beatles stuff was still good. Like it's it's not quite the same, but it, it's something. Mm -hmm. It's better than nothing, certainly. But it's not going to recapture. I have your drum kit mounted on my walls currently, <laughs> and I will be back to play it yeah. to continue to tear them apart. And I wish but I with... could buy rock band stuff. <laughs> so get what a coincidence. So Man. do I. <laughs> Uh, but with that, I will pass off to Ryan for his number one game not released in 2021. Correct. And it would have been that. Um, but I tried to do it with games I hadn't played before. Uh, so, unfortunately, it wouldn't have been Rock Band 4. And mine is considerably less sentimental <laughs> and fun. Uh, All of but, that, bitch. Yeah, I can't. Uh, but Doom has pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> hey, Doom's pretty fucking good. Uh, so the uh, Doom one, it still holds up. It's I think after playing it through this year for the first time, it has moved up into the echelon of probably like my top ten games of all time. Um, the joke I was originally going to do is because I also played Doom sixty four this year, and I was oh, just you gonna were going to do, do Doom. I was just going to do three Dooms. Um, but then I remembered as soon as I wrote Doom 64 down, I was like, that game's not very good. Uh, <laughs> I can point to Doom 64 to be this game that I started to notice where like game journalists have really latched onto this fun clickbaity thing of like, let's reevaluate a game that's not very good and pretend it was great the whole time and actually a hidden gem. So since they released Doom 64 with Doom Eternal, I was yeah. excited to get it and I, you know, finally sat down to play it. I don't think that game really needs to be. I think that game was fairly evaluated uh, this whole time. It, it does not. Fantastic. It does some cool things, <laughs> but it's not very fun. That being said, I'm super glad they reissued it. Me too. <laughs> I am glad it exists. Uh, but because of that game, I now take any sort of like, hey, maybe this was a hidden gem that you didn't know about kind of thing. Maybe you're looking at this thing wrong. I take all of that with the biggest grain of salt possible now. There's uh, there's two identifiers we have now for how to spot a bad journalist. Uh, let's see. Don't like JRPGs. And 
<laughs> it's the Dark Souls of Blank. Opin- and, uh... Opinions on Matrix 4 and opinions on Doom 64. Correct, yeah. <laughs> It's the dark and those apply to opinions. different things. So, so Matrix for movies and uh, Doom sixty four for video games. Hey, y'all should really watch Matrix four. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> it's they made the most important movie of the last like decade. Sorry, so busy people should watch it. Hunter, what's your number one? What are you so busy playing instead of watching the Matrix four? Uh, just like I lost where it was. There it is. Uh, dark Messiah of Might and Magic. Other or some I completely game. forgot about Dark Messiah. What the fuck are you doing? It's a it's one of Arcane's first games, at least I think one of their first ones. And uh, it's made in the Source Engine, so it's got you know physics and shit. And one of those physics is that there's a dedicated kick button. Hell so yeah! You can kick enemies, and if they're near a ledge or whatever, they'll stumble back and then just go flying over the ledge. Or there's just a bunch of spike traps just all over the fucking pole, all over the world. It's just like a grade of pointed spikes and you can kick people into them and they just ragdoll and get stuck on the spikes. I don't know why there's so many sp- There's spikes in literally every level. They're big fans of 300. They like kicking people into stuff. <laughs> And there's a spell, there's like, you know, it's might and magic, so fantasy bullshit. There's a spell where you can freeze enemies, or you can shoot it on the ground and create an ice patch, and if enemies run on it, they'll slip and fall. Into spikes. Into spikes, off cliffs, off into each other, doesn't matter. Hey, well, my hobby sh- is to sharpen the top of sticks, so maybe that's what it is. Like, it, the trend really started to catch on. It's not a it's not a turn based strategy game. No, it's real time. It looks like one though. <laughs> I always thought it was a CRPG. Like yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I thought like I thought Baldur's that franchise Gate. was a CRPG franchise. Nope, it's a first person action adventure. Is and it related if, to the other Might and Magic that is turn based strategy? I think it's set in like the same universe, but as far hmm. as I know, it doesn't really relate to the older ones. Also, it's got four endings. Two evil and two good endings. You know what you like, Hunter. Because <laughs> oh, I played Heroes of Might and Magic. I've never heard of this. I admittedly have not. I didn't know that this was. A, you said it was an arcane game? Yeah. Oh. Huh. I think it was is like. Probably not looking, for me. Is, is this when they were still Looking Glass or? Uh, no, it was actually when they were okay. arcane. Okay. I think well, it was no. the first, second one when they were arcane. Because I think the first one was like Arx Fatalis. Like every arcane game, what you just described sounds badass as fuck. I'm sure I will hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds really fucking cool, and I'm glad you can enjoy all of them. I will live vicariously through you. People call it Sir Kicks a lot. It's adventure. <laughs> I, I, I've never heard anyone talk about this game, but I, so I will take your word. Well, you can tell You probably have heard people want. talk about it, but they were calling it Sir Kicks a lot adventure. Oh, you never yeah, connected of course. the dots. Right. It's got that's not what it's called. <laughs> Jason, what do they call your favorite game that did not come out this year? So my favorite game that did not come out this year is one that I'm pretty sure is universally liked across this group of video game playing folks. And I did end up having to play through almost all of it twice because I fucked up and let some lizard thing die. Um, but it was I forgot you fun. did that this year. <laughs> but uh, it was Undertale. Oh, okay. Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> it's, Just it's watch a, tomorrow. She's, play she's that. a goat, but I mean, it's fine. I don't remember. Well, well maybe he, someone no, who, he could have killed Alphys or Undyne. It was, it was someone who... Sh- yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was, it was uh, Undyne, I think. Oh, okay. I didn't give somebody water. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that'll do it, motherfucker! I didn't do it on purpose. I just Sounds didn't like know. You did. You're wiped by the water cooler. I don't know. That game, <laughs> yeah, that uh, game is weird and expects you to just know a lot of shit. I'm, so I I'm glad that I had to play through it twice in like the span of a week. I'm glad you both played it, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I thoroughly enjoyed that goofy ass game with a lot of funny dialogue and characters that's a good ass game yeah yeah undertale well, is an extremely good it. video Hold game on, there we go yeah no nope, because yeah, there i don't i can't remember what year did it come out oh gosh uh, 16 or 15 
Yeah, it was something 15. like that. It pretty much yeah, swept yeah, all the I, categories. Yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah, I, was, I, I was not doing Goatee back when it came out, but I remember listening to it. Mm-hmm. And being like, yeah, I don't have any fucking idea what this game is, but everyone seems to like it. I'll play it's, it in five years. It's I remember, well, I'm glad you got around to it. I remember playing it, and I was like, I need to show this to everybody I know. And you did. Yeah. And I did. <laughs> I still have my... And it worked uh, out. My like homemade collector's edition of it uh, taking up room on my shelf. Yeah, I got my nice. store bought collector's edition taking up room on my shelf. <laughs> but yeah, Undertale's a good one. I'm glad you played it. Um, this is, this is a good year said, for games not released this year. Like I said, my my list of games not released this year has a number of games that are better than most of the games that I did play this year. <laughs> I like like Hotline Miami was my number four. Oh, fucking number one fucking table tennis almost cracked this list bro table like table tennis made me come back and evaluate my <laughs> list <laughs> like it wasn't gonna make the cut but like i at least considered it yeah it's like i i like super hot's definitely the better game oh yeah and i play it like I, I mean i played like my games not from this year i played little nightmares undertale this is the north star shadow colossus horizon zero dawn highlight miami and then getting the vr thing mashed like five or six other games onto my list of things i had to consider but man table tennis is pretty solid yeah good game um i i i only played five total games that didn't come out this year that were like new to me One of them being Mario RPG Legend of Seven Stars, which I already wrote a piece on. The other one being Last of Us Part Two, which is not good. Um, (laughs) And the last one is one that, like, I know I will get no support for it, but it's like you take the two things I like, and yeah, the the result is something I like, but it's the Theatrhythm Kingdom Hearts game. As it I turns like out, rhythm. that is a thing I would like. Did um, not realize they, they did a Kingdom Hearts one. So See, I remember you talking about it, and I just kind of assumed you were making it up. No, <laughs> so it's called Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, and they shift the camera behind you instead of the side-scrolling, because it's on consoles, not on the DS. Mm-hmm. But, like, it is it is completely theatrhythm. Like, it is it is 1,000% theatrhythm just from a camera behind the back scene. So, like, instead of, like, you know, drawing... You're jumping or you're hitting like an attack button or something, but it is, it is theater rhythm. Like no questions about it. Has all the same loops, all the same drawings, and as it turns out, uh, there's quite a bit of Kingdom Hearts music that I like. Hmm. So I liked this thing, sure enough. But it's, it is a very boring, very known quantity in that regard. So it did not <laughs> make the cut. <laughs> good stuff. Good games. But that will... good games to you draw us to a close on the best game not released in 2021 and i certainly hope that you all will join us next time for uh the my habitual favorite category best moment or sequence uh which we will pick up uh when you join us next yeah we all need to change our clothes for that yeah we're all i'm getting really sweaty so i'm gonna go change it's the joke like works double for me because i only own like 12 identical shirts (laughs) he's like (laughs) and you're always sweaty yeah and i'm always sweaty um so yeah, we join us uh, next time for the best moment or sequence of 2021.